So the Industrial Revolution was made possible by a metric buttload of new technology, and I reckon we ought to talk about them. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, let's get to it. So first, let's consider the fuels and engines that made industrialization possible, and here's where I tell you that the Industrial Revolution wasn't just a singular development. In fact, it had two stages. The first Industrial Revolution started around 1750 and lasted until about 1830 and was mainly confined to Great Britain. The second Industrial Revolution started in the mid-19th century till the early 20th century and spread beyond Britain to some places in Europe, the United States, Russia, and Japan. And one of the chief markers of the difference between them is not merely the geographical spread of industrialization, but also the fuel and engines that characterized each phase. So in the first Industrial Revolution, coal was the main fuel. And coal was real nice because it burned way hotter than wood. So what? Well, that's important because the main engine of the first Industrial Revolution was the steam engine, which was developed and improved by British scientist James Watt in the 18th century. And basically, this engine used the prodigious hotness coming from burning coal to boil water and then create steam and then turn turbines. And when that sweet bippy was attached to fat, factory machines, they started cranking like a boss. And the chief effect of the adoption of the steam engine is that factory machines no longer had to be powered by rapidly moving water in streams, which means that factories could be built dang near anywhere, which became a chief reason for the rapid spread of the factory system. But why stop at powering only factories with steam engines, says you? Well, they didn't, says I. The steam engine was also used to power locomotives, which ran along railroads and would be a significant means of transporting mass-produced goods to market quickly. And then steamships were fitted with steam engines as well, all of which increased the efficiency and speed with which products could be so many ports around the world developed coaling stations for ships to refuel and with the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869 the distance from Europe to Asia shortened significantly which in turn led to the multiplication of steamships and the rapid expansion of trade. Oh and by the way if you want note guys to follow along with this video and all my videos check the link in the description. But then around the middle of the 19th century a new fuel would be harnessed namely oil and that would be the marker of the second industrial revolution. As methods were developed to refine this inky black goodness into products like gasoline a new kind of engine was developed to harness that energy namely the internal combustion engine. And this thing was smaller and more efficient than the steam engine and would eventually power a new development in transportation, namely the automobile. But the thing to remember here is that both of these sources of fuel dramatically increased the amount of energy available to humans during this period, even if it came with significant environmental costs like air pollution. But that's a real bummer and we're going to save it for another video. Now, in addition to fuels and engines, the second industrial revolution majored in the development of other new technologies as well. And just for poops and giggles, I'll name three that you need to know. First was the widespread development of steel as the main building material for industrialization compared to iron in the the first industrial revolution. Thanks to a new technique called the Bessemer process, iron was combined with carbon and hot air was blasted into it and, you know, science, chemicals, etc, etc. Look, I'm a history teacher, not a scientist, so I can't explain exactly how it worked or why, but the point is the steel that emerged from the Bessemer process was far stronger and more versatile than iron alone. And bonus, steel became way cheaper to produce and so steel became the preferred building material for constructing bridges and railroads and ships. Okay, the second technology characterizing the second industrial revolution was chemical engineering. So you had chemical engineers who developed synthetic dyes for textile Styles, which were far cheaper than the organic dyes used in the first revolution. Additionally, industrialists during this period were all about the rubber. And a process called vulcanization was developed that made rubber harder and more durable. And that was real nice because rubber was widely used in factories to make belts for machines and later it would be used to make tires for those sweet automobiles. And third, the second industrial revolution saw the rise of electricity, which had arguably the most significant impact of all the new technologies on industrialized nations. Thanks to our boy Thomas Edison, electricity was harnessed to power light bulbs, which not only lit factories, but also people's homes. And soon, electric streetcars and subways were developed that provided mass transit in major cities that were becoming increasingly large and complex thanks to continued industrialization. And not to be overlooked here is the development of the telegraph, which was developed by Samuel Morse in the 1840s. This thing was able to send communication across wires to distant places with the use of short and long electrical signals, which became known as Morse code. Eventually, in the 1870s, a telegraph wire was laid across the entire stinking Atlantic Ocean, connecting Britain with the United States, which further developed these two industrial powers economies. Okay, and finally, let me explain two major effects that came with this dizzying array of new technology. The first major effect was the development of interior regions throughout the world. You see, for much of human history, the most developed cities and states were located in coastal areas because that's where most of the trade and interaction happened. But with the incredible expansion of railroads, including several transcontinental railroads in places like the United States and Russia, new settlements were developed in places that were previously much more difficult to reach. Additionally, the telegraph made instant communication possible across great distances, which enabled manufacturers to gain almost real-time intelligence on market conditions and distant places. And all of that meant more stuff made, more stuff sold, and they be getting rich. And then the second major effect was the profound increase in trade and migration. Because of all these developments, the amount of global trade multiplied by a factor of 10 between 1850 and 1913, to which I say, dang. And as a result, states across the world were becoming more closely interlinked into a global economy. And then all these new transportation technologies like railroads and steamships facilitated a massive spike in migration as well. By the mid-19th century, a little more than half of Europe's entire population had migrated from rural 
rural areas to urban manufacturing centers in search of jobs. And then because of various factors like famine and political instability in the late 19th century, nearly 20% of Europe's population then migrated to the Americas and Australia and South Africa. Okay, click here to keep reviewing for Unit 5 and click here if you want to grab my video note guys which are going to help you get all the content of this course firmly crammed into your brain folds. And I appreciate you coming around and I'll catch you on the flip-flop. I'm Lerout.